Hi everybody, it's Brian here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. So today's episode is a special one. I had the opportunity earlier this week to interview an SEO specialist by the name of Pat Gostek. It was a really informative video. We shared a few thoughts pertaining to search engine optimization with respect to the print-on-demand industry. And hopefully the tips and advice shared in this episode is going to be of use to you and obviously provide you with a lot of value with respect to your own print-on-demand business. So with that said, it's a rather long video, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. Let's head over right now and get started with the video. Okay, so Pat, thank you very much for joining us on this interview today. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to be with us. Um, I guess um, we'll get started from the get-go with the first question. That is basically, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, as an SEO specialist? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Brian, for having me on, on your channel. Uh, I hope I will uh, give your audience as much value as, uh, as, as I can. Um, so I'm currently a, a video uh, strategist, YouTube strategist slash SEO sp strategist. Uh, and uh, in regards to SEO, uh, um, print on demand SEO, I, uh, I started off uh, like uh, I, I think almost five years ago okay. with uh, with print on the mat to support my my business uh, uh, just as I was growing my YouTube channel and then of course uh, transitioned to consulting doing consulting uh, in the print on the mat space as well as uh, you now more the YouTube strategy space but I have a lot of thing a lot of things to share I I've been on all platforms you can imagine merch by amazon spreadshirt uh so i i, I think i can i, I can uh, give you a lot of knowledge and of course if you have after this call if you have any like open questions uh leave them down in the comments and i will i will come back to this video and, and answer try to answer as much as i can uh, okay. and, uh, and sure. try to try to help your audience out Perfect. I'm sure that um, my subscribers seeing this will be very appreciative of that. So I guess what we can lead up to now is effectively for those who are really new to the print on demand business and maybe have not heard what SEO is, maybe you could give a little bit of a definition in terms of what SEO is and the whole caboodle for that? Yeah, of course. Uh, so SEO, you can find like a lot of uh, like Wikipedia <laughs> definitions, but for me at least, uh, what SEO is actually having. If you have like a design and you really want to uh, nail down the keywords that uh, the people uh, are searching would find the design uh, on the internet. That's basically SEO, like, like finding the right keywords to, to uh, make your beautiful design that I'm sure you put a lot of effort in and uh, put a lot of like, um, you know, details into it, uh, make it as, as, as um, searchable, as findable on the internet as possible. And uh, so in the beginning, when, when SEO kind of like emerged with Google, uh, it was more about, you know, finding keywords and then uh, keyword stuffing thing, things happened back, back in the days. Luckily now it's, uh, it's all like optimized and, uh, it all starts like with a great design and, and hopefully with SEO, you can, you can then, um, make it more visible to, to your audience. And it's, it's, it's the same thing for video as, as, as well as any product basically that you have online, most of you uh, probably have have designs that you want to rank for, right? That's a uh, brilliant, actually. Um, so obviously, when we are looking at the print on demand industry as such, um, one of the more common comments in 2022 is the fact that you know the marketplace has become so saturated with designs. There is a very low barrier of entry into the print on demand design. Obviously, that fact that, you know, globally we've been in and we are still are in to a certain degree with respect to this pandemic. So a lot of people either have to stay in lockdown or lose their quit their job or maybe they lost their job and are trying to find, you know, another way of gaining some income for themselves and for their family too as well. What would you recommend with respect to utilizing search engine optimization? SEO with respect to a person's print on demand business. So the one thing that I would uh, surely recommend is uh, finding 
the right niche and with the right niche is something that you are knowledgeable about uh, or uh, which something that you are passionate about. So for example, uh, you probably have seen a lot of uh, fishing uh, related uh, t-shirts. Let's say this is like a very broad niche, but there are like fine nuances of, of fishing. Uh, it's like um, there are like special poles, special like um, uh, different ty- types of roads. And uh, if you uh, at least uh, if you are not like not in the space of of uh, of, of fishing like if you're if you're uh, if it's not your hobby you, you probably won't know much about fishing so i'm i'm probably like the worst person to uh, explain fishing because i'm i'm really not passionate about it but i'm pretty sure if you're <laughs> like uh if you have have your passion for fishing you will you will probably know a lot of more stuff uh uh, there's a lot of more st- stuff to it. So, what I would do uh, suggest, like uh, for um, for anyone who's starting uh, with SEO, is like using all the all kinds of uh, all kinds of stu- uh, all, all kinds of um, uh, applications, tools uh, that are available. For example, if in regards to um, Amazon, you can use uh, different plugins like the, I think it's like the Unicorn Smasher. There are, there are a bunch of them, uh, Productor. Uh, of course, there are also premium uh, things like Helium 10 and Cerebro C- uh, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of tools that can help you out with really uh, going deep uh, with, with the keywords. So um, especially as you mentioned, uh, it's really saturated. So if you want to have success with uh, any design, you will need to really go deep down the rabbit hole of, of, of keywords and uh, try to find, find your unique spin to, to, to that, uh, that niche. So as an example, um, uh, back in the day, like the, the, the there was like the the niche. Uh, I, I will I will give you give out like my my niche that I was like successful uh, two or three years ago. Uh, there was the a fairly small niche in the vaporwave, um, uh, like the the eighties, um, like kind of like the the future past pastel design, like the you know the dolphins and mm-hmm. and the palms and and things like that. Uh, so that was like a really, really, really small niche back in like 2018. And, uh, I was lucky to like discover it, like that there were like t-shirts selling for like on, on, on Amazon, you have uh, prices, uh, around like 1699, uh, or any, anywhere between 1699 to, uh, up to 1999. But this, uh, there were t-shirts, Amazon, like merch by Amazon t-shirts selling for, uh, $25. And I was like, Oh my God, I, I gotta, I gotta, uh, send this to my designer and, and, uh, let them design this. Uh, and, uh, and I created a, a bunch of vaporwave t-shirts that sold like hotcakes, like, uh, mm-hmm. like December, 2018. Uh, that was really great. <laughs> so, but it, it was down to like doing a lot of research, you know, so using the tools, uh, like, you, you don't have to go uh, da- uh, like deep down the, the rabbit hole uh, at the beginning. You can, you can just uh, kind of start looking for, let's, let's say, fishing and then uh, try to find like, okay, uh, is this something that I can des- uh, do a design for? And, uh, and then trying to f- try to find as, as specific keywords that your niche is typing in. So, um, so that, that would be my advice. Like just just try to find the broad niche and then try to find like the nuances. So it's really, it's really down to the nuances of, of the niche. So a lot of, a lot of people, what, what people do a lot is uh, combining niches. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that might work because uh, like you, you will obviously have people from that niche searching for, let's say fishing. And then we have like, let's say wife, let's say wives and, and the family, you know, relationships so if you combine that, you, you can, you can say like my, 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 uh, I love like, there are like t-shirts, like I love my wife, but you know, but, but fishing is like, I don't know. Uh, they're like combinations. Like of, of, <laughs> yeah, you, 
you know, you know, you, you have like uh, jokes um, that you can or, or puns, and of course, uh, you know, you you have you, you can combine niches. So that that's another strategy. Okay, um, I know that some people have actually brought this up in some of the Facebook groups that I I contribute to as well, and um, basically there was a question. A running question, actually, pertaining to the file name. So when they created the design, I, how important is it to be strategic with respect to the file name? Does that have any pertinence or any relevance to, you know, how your design is ranked in Google, for example? So I think the in terms of uh, file name, I don't think there is like a much, much of an impact in terms of platforms, let's say Merch by Amazon, Spreadshirt and, and so forth, because obviously uh, a lot of designers just use random, random uh, numbers, random file names. The key is to actually use the product description title, those fields, uh, if you have tags or hashtags, that that is like the place where you should you should be optimizing, not the file name. But I think like in terms of uh, your own website, if you have like a WooCommerce or a Shopify, I'm I'm not on Shopify, so don't want to be like uh, telling you that I that I know how it works on mm-hmm. on Shopify. But I know that um, it might have like uh, a small percentage, like for Google rankings, if you're using the image like within. WordPress, for example, mm-hmm. um, but all, even though even there you you still have alt tags and and like really specific um, things that you can you can add like uh, SEO wise to that image that will make the difference. Not the not necessarily like the file itself, mm-hmm. uh, but I, but I, w- I would say if you really really want to have the time to make it like more, more searchable for, for yourself. Because like if you have a database of a couple of thousand uh, t-shirts, you know, and I have that right now, I have like, I don't know, I have designs that I, I have no idea where they come from. And it's like, it's getting like really dangerous in terms of uh, not knowing where it comes from. Like, because I, I have uh, designers made the t-shirts and uh, if I don't like, don't know the source, uh, and I, I, I kind of like cannot find it anywhere on, on any platform. I kind of like say, okay, is this like a design from me or is it a design that I had received from a, from a designer, like an example or something. So right. be really careful to, to, to have like a, a certain way of naming your files. So you will actually know where, where the images come from. So it's more for an organizational point for you, yourself, as the designer, as opposed to anything pertinent to the search engine. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that I have been noticing and I have been seeing quite a lot or rather hearing a lot about is frustration on the part of people who are designing in the print-on-demand industry because there is the perception that you'll design a few designs, post them up, go to sleep, and the next day you wake up a millionaire, which clearly is not the case because there is a lot of competition out there. From your perspective, and maybe there is any advice that you could actually give to the people who are watching this video right now, how important is marketing your designs on social media? I mean, I already know the answer to that, but there are some people who really need to hear it over and over again. Maybe perhaps you could give your contribution in terms of what you feel and how important you feel social media is um, with respect to one's designs and marketing them. From my perspective, uh, it's... um... It's a effort versus results kind of thing. So for for um, for any um, anyone who who hasn't like established any uh, like a social media presence, it might be quite hard to gain the initial followers and the initial audience to like make the the t-shirt even like visible. Mm-hmm. So so it's it's way harder to start a. Um, a, a Instagram channel, uh, like an Instagram um, uh, account, then it's actually to uh, optimize and focus like on making more designs. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if if I I would focus on on creating designs for for Instagram or any any other platform, um, I would basically put like I would try to crank out more designs uh, mm-hmm. that I can rank for because like in the beginning, if you have 
very few designs, it's like chances that uh, that it will be found on like merch by Amazon or any other platform. It's like it's really thin, right? Yeah. So you want to make at the beginning you want to make uh, as as many designs as possible. Mm-hmm. So if you're especially if you're alone um, with with all the design like everything. Uh, it's it's a it's a time versus you know time investment versus uh, effects uh, kind of thing. So mm-hmm. when I started off with on merch by Amazon, uh, I kind of like uh, like it was like for for the few uh, first few months it was crickets. Like I I couldn't like even though um, back in the days like you had more designs to upload, I couldn't like find a lot of designs that were uh, ranking on on Amazon. So it was like a numbers game for me. So I, I because I was alone, I created uh, a lot of designs myself. So um, uh, I kind of like um, tried to do like five designs a day. So mm-hmm. that was like kind of, kind of my 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 uh, my goal every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, after like a, a, a month or so, you you will you have like 150 designs, right? So something along those, uh, along that. And like maybe, you know, 5% of that in the beginning takes off. So mm-hmm. if you wouldn't put in the practice, uh, you know, making the designs, focusing on that, I don't know if, if, if like uh, sharing it on, on social media would actually work. But it's, mm-hmm. it's maybe, maybe something that, that you could approach like a different way. So mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you want to throw a big net out there at the beginning and do as many designs as you can. And then once you find yourself a little bit more established with your designs, you can then try to attempt and start marketing and letting people know about your designs through social media. Makes a lot of sense, definitely. The final question that I want to ask you is, what kind of common mistakes do you normally see people doing with respect to search engine optimization? There's one big in big elephant in the room, like are you doing keyword stuffing or not? Mm. So if you're doing keyword stuffing, stop it right away because like it, it won't help your, it can actually hurt your visibility. And that is, that is like, if I would want you to stop one thing is keyword stuffing. Okay. I'm going to stop you right there. For those who are really new to it, maybe you can, you know, explain what keyword stuffing is first. So keyword stuffing is basically using a bunch of keywords that are totally irrelevant to the to the t-shirt design to to any product actually or uh, basically anything that you do with which has to do with uh, 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 SEO like uh, videos blogs or whatever uh, and you, you kind of like stuff keywords in it just to 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 hope to be more visible on the platform. Uh, the problem with that is uh, the algorithm got smarter over time. So if, for example, you have a design, like a fishing design and you have like bathtub in it, like it's like maybe like, like a 1% related to, to fishing mm-hmm. uh, somehow. But uh, if a lot of people are typing in bathtub and then uh, you have impression so anytime a design is showed on the platform the algorithm knows knows how many people actually clicked on the design itself so if you have like a thousand impressions but only one uh one one person clicked on the design this means that this keyword isn't relevant so it it generally hurts all of your uh, performance of, of that design on the platform because uh, they, like Amazon or any other platform, Spreadshirt, uh, Redbubble, they will know that, uh, that the T-shirt isn't like as exciting and it, it might happen that you will rank eventually, but if you, if you choose your words wisely, you will probably rank much faster like you can even like use fewer keywords just to be safe, you know, uh, just to be safe on, on the safe side. And, uh, and if people like the design, people click on it, people buy it, then, uh, then uh, it will help your rankings much more than like using irrelevant uh, hashtags, tags, and keywords. And would you agree that, you know, finding that one common keyword tag and putting it in the tags, in the description, and in the title could actually be beneficial 
to one's ranking. A hundred percent. So I will, I would, I would definitely choose one, uh, one keyword that is uh, relevant, like to the design, like really specific, mm -hmm. use it in any place that you, you can use it just once. And then uh, title uh, description, you can use different keywords that are also related to the design, but maybe like um, alternative words, synonyms, um, any puns, or uh, like describing a topic, for example, uh, maybe it's a funny t-shirt, maybe it's sarcastic, maybe it's, um, in, let's say in the fishing niche, like you, you can add uh, relevant text. But just um, make it also readable for the for the human. If you uh, see uh, like a, a title that is like you know a bunch of keywords that is like doesn't make sense, uh, it's it's a sign that it's like too too keyword stuffed, too spammy, and you want to avoid that. Yeah, exactly. You you don't want to be in the spammy boat. So because obviously after a while, if you do it like over and over again, the, the platforms will also like kind of. I don't know if it's a myth or not uh, that there is like a shadow ban. Uh, mm -hmm. You have it on on all different platforms, uh, so you you might your profile might get like shadow banned, you know, all the way through. Generally, uh, it's not a good idea to keyword stuff. Pat, this has been very very insightful. We really enjoyed the conversation that we had, and I have no doubt that the viewers watching this particular episode will have gotten a lot of value out of it. How can viewers find you on other channels? So um, I currently started a, an English speaking channel because I have two channels. Uh, one is like 25,000 subscribers, which is a vlogging channel, both in Polish. The mm -hmm. second one is business related, where I just share what I shared with you today. Uh, and uh, the new channel is Productive Creators mm -hmm. um, on YouTube. I will... I will send you the link and you, you can you can link it down down in the description. And uh, and another thing that I can offer is actually you can DM me on Instagram, which is at Pat Just just okay. at Pat Gostek. And we'll put that link in the description field below too as well. Excellent. Well, Pat, I want to thank you very much for the time you've taken. I know that this interview was long in the making. We had a few hiccups trying to meet up as well. But this is part and parcel of, you know, having interviews from different countries across borders and whatnot. Thankfully, the Internet has made it really easy for these kind of things to happen. So I'm really thankful. And on behalf of all the viewers on and subscribers on my channel, thank you very much for being with us. And we wish you continued success. Yeah, Brian, thanks for having me. Thanks again. See you.